Okay. Today I'm in the mood to do a wet on wet painting. A big old mountain. I don't think any structures. I think maybe just like eh, big old mountain. So let's let's get busy. It's an 18 by 24 canvas. I don't paint a lot of 18 by 24s. Mostly because they take up too much room on the wall. Both for my clients and me. So I can't say, oh well, you know. <laughs> I realize they're too big for clients, but if I put them in my house, but well, I only got so many walls in my house. So alright, I'm gonna start some liquid white here. I can never get liquid white out of the can without getting it on me. It just <laughs> baby wipes come in handy. All right, let's go with uh, hmm, let's go with a one inch brush and let's put on a nice thin even coat of liquid white. If you've been following my channel for a while, we I wouldn't say we moved away from wet on wet. We just had some other projects we wanted to do, so we've done those now. Got a couple more left to do to finish, but um, you know it's good to it's good to kind of change things up, do a few other things here and there. We did a little bit of portraiture, did some tall ship stuff. Um, I did a couple of like uh, Tuscan scenes, and so uh, now we're doing now we're back to. Really, I think what I probably like to do the most is just wet on wet because I don't know. I the thing about painting wet on wet is that I, I never I don't have to sit down and kind of plan the painting out. I, 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 all I got to do is just like oh, I want to paint and just kind of let the inspiration flow, you know. So as you go along, like today, I don't really I have an idea I want like a big mountain scene, but that's it. I do have some very sophisticated drawings I did a while back that I keep on my tray over here. And um, for no other reason than the fact that they, uh, they seem to get me in the groove. I'll show them to you here in a second. Alright, that looks pretty good. So coming right out of the box, we're going to try to do something different. Let's clean that brush. I don't really need to clean the brush, but you know what to do anyway. Because the reason I don't need to clean it is because I'm going to a darker color here in a minute. And so, you know, I go from there. Let's see. Let's get some colors out to use here. Let's put this away and get this off the palette. I'm back to using my glass palette. Um, if you haven't seen that in the past. Um, anyway, here's my, here's my super sophisticated drawings. <laughs> I'm not a very good sketcher, but that's okay. Uh, you don't have to be, I don't think. All right, let's get some... So we're going to have a mountain. Let's get some mountain mixture. I was hoping to uh, work on my new paint board today. I'm building a paint board to hold all my paints. This is kind of dry on the end, so let's get a, get a little skin around the top. There we go. Let's get some mountain mixture on there. And I think I, I, don't know, I don't have any Prussian blue and I don't have any thingo blue on my board. So, hang on a second. Let me go to my other board and see what we got. Well, 
really. Okay, then on that board, let's see if we got any down here. I'll probably leave this part in on the video because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I don't know if I could paint. It's so complex. Uh, you know what? If I can do it, you can do it. Simple as that. Uh, cerulean blue. No, that's not what I want, though. Okay. Another nut box. One more. No, phthalo green. I have more containers of paint than any other artist I know. Hmm. Nope, this is French Ultramarine. Let me check my Grumbacher box. Oh yeah, hold it. the Grumbacher box is supposed to have some in it. Let's see what we got. There it is. All right, let's make a note. I'm running low on that. So let's go ahead and put a clip on it. No, no, since we're adding another blue to the board, we'll have to... Um, move everything down. <laughs> oh, that's nice. This is uh, Grumbacher Academy. I've not used this before, but it was on sale, so... I think you could buy like a whole pack of it for a whole um, set for $4.99, something like that, on sale. All right, for now, let's just put it, oh, there's a spot right there. Oh, I don't have to move everything, yay. All right, so that crisis is over. Let's get back to painting. All right, so we want to start off with the sky. Now, one of the things about the sky, you know, a lot of people, I mean, you hear me talking about this blue, but I don't want to have like a bright blue sky. I want to kind of have like a stormy sky because I want the mountain to kind of pop off of the thing. So let me flatten some of this paint out. I don't want to have a big dollop on my board. I want it, I want it to kind of be flattened out so that, uh, you know, it's... Uh, Nice and easy to load the brush. Okay, let's do this. Now I'm going to put a little bit of mountain mixture in with this. Alright. I'll beat that paint up in there. Alright, we're going to start on this corner and work our way across. And let's go to this corner. Well, it's still got a lot of paint in the brush. If you're wondering if I'm painting with both hands, yes, I am. So don't don't go through the whole video wondering about that. I, it's just something I do. It's something I can do, so it's something I do do. I want that. I want that mountain mixture to kind of. Mute that label blue, it'll be too bright. Let's just kind of keep it coming for right now. Just keep it coming down. And we're gonna put the. Hmm, let me that All right. Let's stop with that at the moment, right there. I might just use a one-inch brush for most all of this today. I don't know. We're gonna let's go back and blend this. So I have some thoughts of darkening the sky up even more, but let's let's blend it first and see what we get. So in order to blend it, we're gonna use just the front, the the upper edge of this brush. So we're kind of gonna be like using the front like that. So let's just do that now. We want to blend it completely smooth. 
I guess I'm gonna do that left hand. Now you can do it with five and four strokes, or you can do it in circular strokes, whatever, whatever you want to use. It's your, your painting, do it how you want to do it. So I'm going to wipe this brush out. I'm not going to clean it. I'm just going to wipe it out. Then we're going to go with just the mountain mixture in the brush. Before we do that, though, let's get some, get some of the paint off of us. I don't want to carry all that paint around on my brushes. So probably should have just put on some gloves. Too stubborn for that sometimes. All right. Let's get on. Dark, dark storm clouds. Now we will clean the brush. Before we, and I'll take I'll use a different brush to go back up to the smooth these clouds out. It's because I don't really want to. I don't want to bring any more any any paint thinner up to the board. But I do need to wipe the brush out, so. So it's raining here. And if you're watching this in some year besides 2020, be glad it's not 2020 anymore. All right, so let's let's curl these up some. some more paint back up here in a second. Let's use this guy. All right. So we're just adding to Come back and blend them here in just a second. Okay, light as a feather, light as a feather. Okay, 
looks pretty good. All right, good enough. All right. Big old mountain now. So let's start working on that. I'm gonna use a knife today. You can use a knife or you can use, um, oh, I don't know. I use a filbert quite often. So we're gonna start off with a, a bead of paint. Let's put it right here. I think I want this to come down even more. That. And we'll shape some more of this with a brush in a second. We're just kind of laying out the peaks. I say we'll shape that with a brush in a little while. And let's put like this. All right, that looks pretty good for the knife work. I think I will shape this with a one-inch brush, so we'll just do that now. Add a little bit of paint to that, but maybe we'll add a, add a lot. Let's have like a peak right here. Maybe another one like right here. Alright. Gotta use up the paint and the brush here. Alright. We'll start off with some titanium white. Now mountain right now are dark against the dark but we're gonna as we lighten them with uh, more highlights and stuff we're going for pop that to pop that mountain up out of that sky We might pull these mountains. You can 
play with this, you know, as you until you're until you're ready to highlight. I'm looking at this and deciding how I want. You can bring this mountain on down. So we can add a bunch of different slopes and stuff if we want. So we'll decide it as we, as we start to find just how much architecture we want to have up in there. Okay. Clean that brush. Let's move back to the knife. I'm going to go with a small knife, titanium white. I'm going to flatten it out on the palette. And let's just start up here. I didn't put near enough titanium white out on the thing, but that's okay. Okay, let's wipe the knife off a little bit. You can get a buildup of paint on your knife with that mixing it with that mountain mixture. So just watch out. Alright, I think I want a little bit of a slope like right here. And then I'll just kind of merge with that part of the mountain. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Absolutely, that's my favorite way to paint. It's just so relaxing. And so, let me tell you this. It didn't used to be. So, if you find that you're painting, if you're, if you're, that you're not relaxing, you're probably worried you're going to mess something up. Let me say this about that. Oil painting is very forgiving. You can always just wipe it back off or scrape it off and then just do it over. So don't don't get don't get too wound up about that. Alright, so let's take some titanium white now. We may come back and put some more on it in a minute. But let's take that. Let's mix it with some phthalo blue. The phthalo blue is very powerful, very powerful. So yeah, we're gonna need some more titanium white. So we're gonna switch to I have Winton on the palette, but I'm going to take and switch to this Grumbacher because I want to use it up. But this paint is, it's pretty old, and it, but look how thick it is. It's nice. All right, so, but <laughs> for the things I've been painting, it's not too good because it's too thick for like portraiture and stuff. So, you know, you just have to mix it all the time and it's kind of a hassle. But I will buy another tube of it though, and I will buy another tube. Okay, once again, a little hand cleaning going on. You can see where I've dragged my hand. That doesn't mean that's. I mean, talk about talking about oil painting being very forgiving. So hopefully you can see these streaks here. 
I just want these streaks to go away. Just go like this. There they go. They got one. Just like that. So don't worry about that stuff. Don't don't worry about, oh, I touched the canvas or whatever. Just don't even let that bother you. I'm mixing up my reverse highlight color. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna kind of brush this in right here. And then we're gonna switch to the side piece, this little side part, and just kind of work that in. Also, you can kind of, you know, add some of these little doodads in here and there. We're going to do that with some black here in a minute, too. So, hang on. Ran out of paint. It's a common thing for beginning painters to start running out of paint. And so instead of just going back and getting paint, they um, try to push down harder and get it, and that's just not going to work. So don't do that. Now, now, now let's add a little bit. To that, where do you go? There it is. I need a bigger. There we go. All right. Let's take. Uh, let's just use some midnight black since we're, since we're kind of doing a Bobby Ross thing. So we're sort of kind of. Just use some midnight black. It'll it'll be contrast enough, I think. All right, and then we just want to kind of ease this in here in a couple of spots, like a little bit, not a lot. Just, you know, put a couple of little things in there just to make it a little more contrasting. All right, that looks good enough. Okay, back to the one-inch brush. We're just creating some mist here. Kind of staying in the flow of the mountain, you know, the slopes. We'll bring it out a little bit farther, probably. I'm going to add 
some other things. And things and things. This is just the same kind of color we originally put up in the sky. I'm just going to use this to put snow and stuff on top of it. So we're just kind of letting it mix with the liquid white. And then we'll do some more stuff here. <laughs> See that phthalo contrasting to that mountain mixture up there? It's nice. It's pretty. Of course, we'll blend all this momentarily. Oh, nice big dark patch. That's good too. We'll probably need some more of that mountain mixture before we're done. Nice big blue patch. That's okay. It'll all come together. So, you know, you could look at that big blue patch and go, ah! Oh no! It's fine. It's fine. It's gonna show up really nice in the shadows. Alright, so now we kind of got like the foreground thrown in here. But let's start working on that. If you're watching this video and you'd like to see me do a live, um, drop me a note, drop me a DM, and let me know. Maybe we can work that in. Let's see, before we do that, let's get some sap green. Oh, my new tube of sap green. I think this is Gambling 1980. Yep, it is. I've used a lot of different paints. I, I like some better than, than others. Um, But usually it doesn't have to do with, well, it does have to do with the brand of the paint, but I like Gamblin 1980 for some colors, and then I like regular Gamblin for other colors, and then I like Bob Ross stuff for other kinds of colors. So, you know, it depends. It just all depends on what you like. And so really all that matters is, is what you like. So I think I want to add a little more blue in right here. That'll look better. I think that looks better. All right. Don't worry, we'll fix that in a little bit. No biggie. Let's get a fan brush and some phthalo green. Not phthalo green, sap green. And this is a new sap green, so we're going to have to try to test this color and see how it does. I thought I'd give the gambling sap green a, a try. And mostly because it's just easier for me to find than, than Bob Ross colors here. Now, since Amazon doesn't carry that stuff anymore. So, let's kind of start like right here. Let's just, we're just going to use the edge of the brush, the top edge of the brush. That's not quite dark enough. Let's just put a little bit more. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. I kind of like that. 
Maybe a little bit more though. Let's see. Yeah. Don't want to get too dark too fast. We do want it to be dark enough that we can see it, right? So just kind of keep working and experimenting here. And that's good because you'll get mix, a mix-up of colors in here, and that's nice. That's always nice. Because the closer they get, I mean, the darker they get, the closer they get, and, and it'll make the it'll make it kind of pop out on the painting. Oh my, those look like fence posts. Let's, let's kind of uneven that a little bit. There we go. That's better. And again, I'm painting with both hands. Flip the brush over, use both sides. That's looking pretty good. Kind of want to fill this middle in a little bit. It's a little too scant. Now, some of these trees are going to disappear, um, probably, before we get done. There'll be other things in the foreground, probably, that'll push them back, but we'll know they're back there, right? Let's kind of darken these up a little bit, coming this way, like they're kind of coming around. This is not water, this is snow down here, so, you know, we're not going to have reflections like we normally do, but what we are going to do is kind of thump this out, kind of create some fog and mist here and there, here and there, there and here. We want to kind of move this, you know, up and down, up and down as we go, kind of give us some distance. start putting now painting snow let's talk about painting snow painting snow a lot of people struggle with that there it's I'm going to show you a few things though that'll hopefully help you in your tree in your uh, snow painting so first of all um, I don't think I'm gonna clean the brush I think I'll just use it like it is we get some load this brush up with some paint we switch back to Winton now. First of all, it doesn't have to be glaring white for your snow to take effect. I mean, you can make it as white as you want, but if you do, you're going to probably have to. If you make it really white, 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 then you're probably going to have to let some coats dry. But I'll show you a few tricks. As you can see here, I've, I've kind of built it up here. Now, I'm going to stop there with that for a second. Because I want to put some trees. Let's put some more trees in. Let's get a fan brush. Let's use this one. Some sap green. This is straight out of the can, sap green. This one. Okay, I don't have enough contrast here between this and that, so we're going to take that and we're going to add just a touch of black to it, and then we're going to make it a little bit taller, like that. I'm going to need some more sap green.
Now we're going to stop the bottom of this one just a little further back. I mean, a little higher up. So that's going to make it look like it's pushed back farther. And let's just make another bigger one like that. Okay. And let's move that one down a little further. We're going to add a little more dark to that. Have the trees kind of come in like that. All right, put another one over there. Let's get some more sap green though before we start. I hadn't really planned on going through that much sap green, but it is what it is. The painting goes where it wants to go. I'll probably have to do this again because when you start with a new brand of paint for a particular color, there's always a kind of a, a, a breaking in period when you're you're kind of trying to get used to you know how thick is it how how well does it perf you know how does it perform you know compared to other things you've used is it is it as thick or not as thick or whatever all right let's put um let's put um, let's see I want to have three big trees I think right over here so let's put another let's put one tree right here I'm sorry if my head gets in the way, folks. But kind of like my painting, my head has to go where it has to go. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's get this. All right. Let's do like a smaller one off in the distance. All right. And then let's do one more. Let's do kind of a crooked tree. Let's have this crooked tree like that. I like that. That's Filbert. Filbert. Somebody stepped on Filbert. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's get some highlights on these trees. Now, normally we would go to paint um, the trunks of these trees, but these are still kind of far off, so. You know, they're just, don't get too carried away with the highlight. All right, let's clean the brush off, just because I have a lot of paint in it. All right, we're just going to wipe it out, and then we're going to pick up the highlight color we used on the mountains. We're going to use that for the R, kind of reverse color, reverse highlight. I think I could probably have a little bit more white in it. And if it doesn't stick, just add a little bit of liquid white to it. There we go. There we go. I'm working in a reverse highlight. Or I'll keep them all on the same side of the tree. All right, then back to the regular highlight with a touch of liquid white. Don't get, again, don't get too carried away with your highlight. Otherwise, you'll make your tree look kind of gaudy. So don't do that. All right, now let's start working on these bigger trees. Well, let's put, I'll tell you what, let's put a little bit of snow. Let's put some more snow in here first. So I just kind of loaded this brush up. It's going to come right in here. You know what? I think rather than just put snow around those trees like that, I think I'm going to do something different. Let's get, oh, well, I don't know. Let's use, let's just go back to a fan brush because everybody has one. So let's get that. Some sap green and some black. Let's kind of, we're just using the tip of this to build this kind of little set of stuff up here. This will be a background color. And 
and actually we could put a little bit of that like back in this part if we wanted to. Let's just do that. So that's separating. It creates another whole layer. So you got like a fog and this and that instead of. I have found that um, about 13 layers seems to be. For me, uh, a lot of my clients like paintings that are about that, about that deep. So if we look here, you know, somewhere that depth or more. So the more depth, you know, the better off they are. So we've got the sky, the clouds, uh, that face, that face. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we're at thirteen now. So. I have another idea about going back and touch it, doing a little bit of touch up on the clouds now that we've come this far, but we'll do that. We'll do that maybe last if we decide to do it at all. I don't usually like to go back and touch things after I've finished with them. But Alright, so now we're just going to take some liquid white and we're just going to kind of tap it into the ends of this fan brush and just lightly tap it into this brush back here. Like that. And the same over here. And if you start to run low on paint, then just make sure you flip your brush over first. Okay, looks pretty good. Now we're just kind of using that color to pull it out into the snow. We're just going to continue that over here. Let's just, let's just wipe this. Mm, that's too dirty. Let's just uh, working against the clock today. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. Like that. You can really build up layer after layer after layer after layer. It's awesome. The more you can do it, the better off. The better off you are. So always give it a try. Okay, we're going to add to the palette some Van Dyke Brown. So we've got Thalo Blue, uh, Mountain Mixture, White, Black, two different colors. No, no one. Uh, Midnight Black. Um, a little blue. Oh, uh, and sap green. Yeah. And now we're just adding some brown because we're gonna we're gonna put some more stuff up here in the front, bigger trees. So we're just kind of mixing up a batch of paint, and I think I'm just gonna mix it with a knife first, just because it's such a big batch of paint. We're gonna take uh take sap green and some brown and some black. Throw a little bit of blue in there since we got some on the palette. That's a good thing about this glass palette. It's it's really nice for mixing paint, man. It's so smooth. All right, we load the brush up. So needless to say, we're gonna use a fan brush since I have it loaded. All right. So let's start. Let's get some bigger, big old trees. So I want to put one on each side. So let's, but, um, I tell you what, before I do that, let's pull a little bit of snow, a little more snow, right in here. And if it layers like that, that's awesome. I mean, it really puts a nice, you know, thing, nice texture into the snow. We'll have some other bushes and things up here in a minute there. All right, there we go. All right, now let's do it. Big trees. Let's start with one right about here. Why not? This is your bravery tree. <laughs> or something. All right. 
right, so now we're painting the back of the tree. And you know, you could worry about, you know, whether your tree is completely straight and all that kind of stuff, but pff, trees aren't straight. Go out in the woods and look. Find me a straight tree and you'll find a telephone pole. It's just, it's not, it's just not that, it's just not how it is. Out in the wild. All right, I want to kind of broaden this tree out a little bit down here. All right, I like that. I like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then there's going to be some bushes and stuff around the bottom, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, let's get um, a shorter tree, like right here. And let's bring it. Now we're, we're painting over a lot of paint here, so you got to have a lot of paint on your brush. Okay, let's fill it up one more time. So this color is green and black and brown and blue, and it's kind of mixing with the, you know, the blue and the white that we already have on there. All right. Have some bushes out like that, and maybe some out like that, and maybe some out like this. Okay. We'll come back to those trees. Let's go on this side. I hope my head doesn't get too far in the way, but we'll just have to do with what, what we get, guys. I gotta be able to see it to paint it. I'm sure Bob would say that's not true, but <laughs> I'm sure he has some way for blind people to paint, knowing Bob. All right, let's keep our brush loaded. Going over this thick paint. Let's fill it up again. We'll let that sit in there, there. And let's do another one. Let's do another crooked one like this one. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more. Well, I might have enough. I want to kind of... I think I'll... Let's go back to my one-inch brush. I know it's nice and soft. So it feels pretty good. I'm going to try to load this up. I want to kind of push some just bushes. bushes in here. paint though. So there we go. There it is what it is. So we'll, that's what we use. Okay. All right. Good enough. Let's 
clean the brushes, and then we'll start working on. Okay, so what did I say we were painting up there? The back of the tree. That's right. So now we're going to paint the middle of the tree. Then we'll paint the front of the tree. All right. So let's get the knife again. Get the paint off our fingers again. I go through a lot of baby wipes in case y'all haven't figured that out. All right, so let's see. Let's get the knife. Let's pick up some Van Dyke Brown, and we'll flatten it out on the palette. And let's pick up some white, and let's flatten that out on the palette. And just kind of... Now, you don't want to... You want it to be marbled so that, you know, you don't have just a straight color. Now, all these... Well, I'll tell you what. Before we do that, don't lose that topic. We're going to be right back. All right, we're just going to take this knife and we're just going to kind of, on a couple of these trees, just push the top out a little bit. That one's got one sticking out pretty good. We'll stick that one out. And we'll stick this one out. And we'll stick this out. And then we'll stick this out. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, let's see if wipe that off. Be sure you keep your knife clean. Because if you don't, it's going to get rough later in your as you're painting to kind of. You know, it doesn't really matter where you kind of stick these trunks. Um, you're going to start putting highlight on in a minute, but it, it adds some really nice texture to your trees. And, and people like it. They like to see that when they're buying paintings. It's just a little added extra detail. All right. Okay, so now we've painted what? The middle of the tree. Now we want to paint the middle of the bushes, except we're going to do that by removing paint. So we're going to use our knife, and we're just going to kind of scratch some. start off with mixing up the background color and you might say why it's just because I like to do it that way there's no real there's no super scientific secret there as to why I like to do it that way I just do I'll use the same brush, so I might have to clean it. Now, here's one thing you can should consider, or you can consider, you can try it and see if you like it or you don't like it. Um, sometimes, when I just want to swap up my brush strokes so that I don't go like right back in the same exact spot with the same exact stuff, um, strokes, I, I switch brushes even types of brushes, like from fan brushes to filberts to other kinds of things. And you could slap a little bit of this in here, here and there, and there and here. I don't want to get too carried away because I don't have too much of this color. And again, don't get too carried away with your highlights. Don't get too freaky. Don't get too freaked out. Let's put a little bit on this tree. Then we're going to come back and do a little bit of more snow work here, too. Uh, let's see. Stay on the right. Stay on the left on the right. To be right, stay left. trees to go. I 
just let it flow. Just let it flow. Just let it flow. Right. Now, before we put the last highlight on, I want to kind of address the last... Oh, there goes another little paper towel. Um, address the last part of the snow. Because I'm going to use the same brush to do that. So, I'm going to kind of just pull this pull this snow in like this. Like we did up above, we're just going to kind of work it, work the color like that. The same over here. Okay. All right. I'm happy with that. Okay, dokie. Let's put the final touches on. I like colors. White, liquid white. So we're just going to use liquid white, I think. I don't always just use liquid white because sometimes it's it's a little too gooey for me, but I think it's going to work out just fine for this. I'm watching it. Watching what? The clock. Are you going to take me? Yep. As soon as I finish this painting. I'm going to wipe that color out of the brush to pick up some more. Let me do something a little different for these bushes, though, and those bushes right there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to clean this brush. Wipe it out. Then I'm going to take this brush and put some liquid white in it. I'm going to load it up pretty good, find me a spot on the palette that I can push it into the brush. Then I just kind of want to tap, 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 kind of tap, tap this in in different spots. Over here you can kind of do the thing if you want, where you just kind of push it up, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'll just touch it there and touch it. Same over here. We can push it up a little bit. It's kind of hard to push up with um, liquid white sometimes, but you can do it. Just keep your touch really soft, like that. Okay, and with that done, guys, we're going to call this painting done. I don't really want, I, I just wanted to showcase these mountains and I just wanted to get it done. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see you on the, this channel on the next one.